Do you know what malapropisms are? They're a certain kind of hilarious mistake people make while speaking. Would you like to hear examples of malapropisms of famous people and famous characters from books, TV shows and movies? Like Shakespeare's Dogberry, Stan Laurel of Laurel and Hardy fame, and pop icon Justin Bieber. Then do keep watching. But first, if you're new here, do like, follow, subscribe to The English Nut on Facebook, Instagram and YouTube. Thank you. When Canadian pop star Justin Bieber was questioned on a talk show about his numerous tattoos, he responded, I'm not going for the 16th chapel look. The interviewer, David Letterman, had just commented that Bieber's tattoos were becoming like the art in the Sistine Chapel, which ornately covers almost every inch of available space. But apparently Bieber had never heard of this world-famous 15th century chapel in Vatican City, whose frescoes are painted by Michelangelo. A verbal blunder like this, in which one word is replaced by another one that is similar in sound but different in meaning, often to hilarious effect, is called a malapropism. Bieber is not the only famous person to have produced a memorable malapropism. After being defeated by Lennox Lewis, boxer Mike Tyson, who had thus far been the undisputed heavyweight champion, said, I'm fading into Bolivian. Of course, he meant oblivion. But the former Prime Minister of Australia, Tony Abbott, took the cake when he said, No one is the suppository of all wisdom. One can only suppose that he meant to say repository. Given that suppository is the term for medicine that is not taken through the mouth, but uh, how do I put this delicately? Through the other end. The word malapropism is thought to have originated in the name of Mrs. Malaprop. She is a character in a comedic play written by Richard Brinsley Sheridan in 1775 called The Rivals. Mrs. Malaprop is characterized by the quirk of using words incorrectly. Her name, which became synonymous with using words inappropriately, appears to be derived from the French phrase mal à propos, meaning inappropriate. Sheridan was known for making up names that reflect the essence of a character. Here are some of Mrs. Malaprop's malapropisms that make for good comedy. He is the very pineapple of politeness, she says probably meaning pinnacle. Promise to forget this fellow, to illiterate him, I say, quite from your memory. Obliterate, not illiterate, is what she must mean. She is as headstrong as an allegory on the banks of the Nile. Alligator? I have since laid Sir Anthony's prepositions before her. Proposition, I think, is what she means. Oh, it gives me the hydrostatics to such a degree, she exclaims, probably meaning hysterics. I would have instructed her in geometry that she might know something of the contagious countries. She must mean geography, not geometry, and contiguous, not contagious. Contiguous would have made sense here as it means sharing a common border. Though in the current context, contagious countries sounds oddly relevant. Of course, the incorrect words of this lady are an intentional literary device used by the playwright. And there have been many other writers too who have used malapropisms to comedic effect. The writers of the Laurel and Hardy films, for example, made malapropisms one of the comic quirks of Stan Laurel. In Sons of the Desert, he says, we floundered in a typhoid, meaning typhoon. He also says that Oliver Hardy is suffering a nervous shakedown rather than breakdown and calls the exalted ruler of their group the exhausted ruler. He also says of Oliver Hardy and himself, we're like two peas in a pot instead of pod. All in the Family gives us more examples of the malapropisms of a fictional character. This sitcom from the 70s is considered by some to be the greatest American TV series. Archie Bunker, the ignorant and opinionated protagonist, is known for his malapropisms. What do I look like, an inferior decorator? He says instead of interior decorator. Last will and tentacle. Last will and testament. We hold these semi-animal meetings. Semi-annual meetings. He also refers to a liberal-minded neighbor as the queen of the women's lubrication movement instead of the women's liberation movement. 
in her elastic stockings next to her very close veins, meaning very close veins. Patience is a virgin, he says. And I always thought it's a virtue. The Sopranos is an American crime drama TV series. Its writers have used a number of malapropisms in the dialogues. The protagonist, Tony Soprano, an Italian-American mobster, says prostate with grief, meaning prostrate. Revenge is a dish best served with cold cuts, giving an unintentional twist to the saying revenge is a dish best served cold. Soprano's protege, Christopher Moltisanti, says create a little dysentery among the ranks instead of dissent. Another character in the series says, that's right, honey, the sacred and the propane in place of profane. Long before Mrs. Malaprop gave us the term malapropism, Shakespeare had played with such humorously misused words. Well, of course he had. Everything in English literature seems to ultimately link back to Shakespeare. The character Officer Dogberry in Shakespeare's Much Ado About Nothing makes errors like Mrs. Malaprop which is why malapropisms are also called dogberryisms. For example, Dogberry says, Our watch, sir, have indeed comprehended two auspicious persons, instead of saying they have apprehended two suspicious persons. In America, malapropisms are sometimes named Bushisms, after US President George W. Bush, who is known for such verbal slips. It will take time to restore chaos and order, he once said. I am mindful not only of preserving executive powers for myself, but for predecessors as well. A bit tough given that predecessors means those who came before, as in presidents who served before Bush. He ought to have said successors. The law I signed today directs new funds to the task of collecting vital intelligence on weapons of mass production. Weapons of mass destruction, I think he meant. They have miscalculated me as a leader, Bush averred. Misjudged, perhaps? It's not just famous characters, real and fictional, that spout malapropisms. Regular people like you and me often do it as well. People have said things like, she loved to eat crabs and other crushed Asians. I hope it was crustaceans that she actually loved to eat. You lead the way and we'll proceed. That's a bit contradictory. I presume the speaker was trying to say proceed. A rolling stone gathers no moths. Of course it doesn't, and no moss either. Having one spouse is called monotony, someone said. Perhaps he meant monogamy? The flood damage was so bad, they had to evaporate the city. I'm sure the person meant evacuate, but evaporation of the flood waters could be a novel solution. My father says the monster is just a pigment of my imagination. That sounds colourful, but he probably means figment. At a book launch I attended, the Master of Ceremonies said, Without further ado, let me invite the author on stage. I think he meant ado. A dogberryism like in Shakespeare's Much Ado About Nothing. If you know any other malapropisms, do write them below. I'm the Englishnut. Without further ado, let me say bye for now.